and uh, he's, I mean, he has shouted out the word and it's gone across America with steam. And he said, today we're praying for our president. Amen. So we prayed for him this morning, but we're going to really right. s- step in and pray for him tonight. Yeah. And there's a, a bunch of scriptures that we're going to pray out over him. But this one, he says, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, If my people, mm-hmm. we are his people, yes. which are called by your name. That's us, Lord. Today, we take and we humble ourselves. We pray and we seek your face. And Lord, we turn from our wicked ways. Any way that's not your way is a wicked, twisted way. And then, Father, we declare that we will hear from heaven. You will forgive our sin and you will heal our land. So, Father, we just want to thank you tonight as we stand in the gap and make up the hedge for our nation. You told us in 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2, to come before you to pray. I'm just going to let you guys put put the scriptures up there. I can't turn fast enough. 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. Where we pray for all those who are in authority over us. Because Jesus Christ, you are our hope. You are our intense, earnest expectation. Verse 2. Put up there 1 Peter 2, 17. Honor all men. Lord, we honor all men. We love the brotherhood. And we stand in reverence of you. And Lord, we honor the king. In this country, we don't have a king. We have a president. And we honor our president, Lord. And we bind the words. We bind the hindering spirits. We bind the forces that are against him. You said... Uncle, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. So therefore we come against the forces of hell that have come to divide this nation. Those that have their own agendas. Every one of them. And Father, we're determined to honor it's not a matter of whether we're this party or that party, whether we like or dislike. It's a matter of your word, and your word says to honor. Romans 13, 1, Lord. He says, let everybody, every soul be subject to higher power. Lord, for there is no power but of God. For the powers that be are ordained of God. They've been set apart, Lord. They've been sanctified. They've been set apart for such a time as this. And Father, we just want to thank you. Even if it's not our party, Lord, that's in, that's in power. We know that they are ordained and set apart and sanctified by you. You told us in your word that the king's heart is in your hand and you'll turn it whithersoever you choose. So therefore, Father, we're determined to be subject to you first. Amen. 
And I thank you, Father. In our country, you've made a way. You've made a way for us to make our choices known. We have representatives, Lord. We pray for our representatives that they'll hear our voice and the voice of another. Because our voice comes from you. We declare that our representatives will hear your voice and the voice of another they won't follow. We want to thank you, Lord. They'll not follow the ways of a man. Because all the ways that, lead, that come from man lead to death. But they'll follow life. There's only one way for our country, Lord, and that's up. Only one way, Lord, is through you. It was founded through you. We declare that we are one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You told us, Lord, in Jeremiah 29.7, to seek the peace and the prosperity of our city. Our dwelling place. Well, Father, we don't just do that for our city, but we do it for our nation. We seek the wholeness, the soundness, the nothing missing and the nothing broken, as well as the prosperity of our nation. Then we then we bring it down to our state. When then we bring it down to our region. Then we bring it down to our city, our municipalities, Lord. In Psalm 2, Lord, Psalm 2, verses 10 and 11. You said, be wise now, therefore, O you kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Alakia, serve the Lord with reverence and rejoice with trembling. So, Father, we thank you that our rulers serve you, that our, our leaders serve you with reverence. They reverence you, Lord. They reverence your word. They reverence your law. Like the law of love, and they celebrate you, Lord. They celebrate the fact that you are the one who's in control. Proverbs 11, verse 14. Proverbs 11, 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall, Lord. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So I want to thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for the council. Thank you for the council. Thank you for those leaders that have surrounded our president. Thank you that our pastor is one of them, Lord, but I thank you. I thank you that he's got prayer warriors. I thank you that he's got intercessors. I thank you he's got people who are preaching to him the word of the living God. I want to thank you, Lord, that he has overturned so many things on abortion. I understand, Lord. I understand why the enemy is mad. I understand, Lord. I understand, Lord. Baal says, wait a minute, where's all my babies? Well, that's because we struck down Baal. Baal has no place in America. We do not offer our children to Baal. 
Aliando Walo Coke and Abanjo, our children, Aliando Walo Kiamba, our precious, Ala Kanjela, they are gifts from God, Aliando Loko Salamanjo, and we offer them to you, Lord, Aliando Laka Salabahanjo. I want to thank you, Lord, for every unborn child protected, Ala Kila Kulamanda. Lord, I thank you for every balokosha, every little mama that's in a crisis. I thank you for giving her peace that passes, understanding, peace that guards her heart, guards her mind. Thank you for showing her a way where there is no way. Thank you for taking her hand and leading her through that wilderness. Oh, and Father, I thank you. We pray for our lalako, the leadership of our courts. Oh, Jesus. I call a book I want to thank you, Lord, that our judges hear your voice. Our judges hear your voice. Our judges hear your voice, Lord. Our judges. Because, Lord, every one of our laws has been determined by your book. And so many are trying to overrule overrule Father we declare that marriage is just like you said it's between a man and a woman and Father we pray for all those who were caught up in deceit thank you for opening the eyes of their understanding thank you for showing them the truth because the truth that they know will set them free. And the devil won't be able to steal from them anymore. We know who the thief is. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. But you came that they might have life. 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 So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the truth. And the truth of your word, the prosperity of your word. Oh, we thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that things are shifting. Things are changing. I want to thank you, Lord. That the laws that have been passed protecting the unborn will stand. I want to thank you, Lord, that as we pray, that those things that could be used against it, oh, no, 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 no. Again, you gave us the right, Lord, to bind up. Bind up. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. We bind up the hindering spirits. We bind up the forces of hell against our unborn. We loose you from your assignment. And I thank you, Lord, for clearing the way. Clearing the way you've gone before him to make every crooked way straight. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You cannot have, I can't. The devil can't have our country. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. You can't invade our country. I want to thank you, Lord, that this nation is turning its back on sin, on sickness, on disease, and turning its back. Turning its back on worldliness, turning its back on sin. I'm putting their eyes on you, Jesus. I want to thank you, Lord, that this nation, oh, yes, sir, everything that can be shaken is shaken, so that what cannot be shaken will remain. 
ale kilo koka la bara da madasso lo coach lo do lo lo kida manangile bobo ala la mera kula bo kanga la bacheda I want to thank you, Lord, that the light of the glorious gospel is driving out the darkness. Because where light is, darkness cannot stay. And Lord, I thank you. You said as things get darker and darker in the world, oh, the light of the glory, the light of the glory, the light of your church, the light of your people begins to shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Driving out that darkness, I call I mo chela biada. I want to thank you, Lord, Oloko Kula, for a tsunami of souls, souls, and more souls coming into your kingdom. Okay, I'm an uncle of that light, just driving that darkness right on out of them. I have that light illuminating their path. Alan Kongi le bo shola kula mada kila batola matere. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that your church, oh, Bengale Badola Bakala Badasilepia. Your church, Lord, the ecclesia, the ambassadors of heaven, Aliango, those with the authority to rule, those with the right and the authority, those that have been separated and sanctified. To Akilebo to rule on this earth, Akilebo are rising up. Akalakon gela bangele bi Akileko, lo don dola bangele bi ando. I want to thank you, Father, that the glory is being manifested. I want to thank you that your glory is a consuming fire. I want to thank you, Lord. We present ourselves a living sacrifice. Okay, Lama, we just want to be holy and acceptable. And again, that's just our reasonable service. And Father, we thank you that as your glory is manifested, I thank you for burning out Aka. Eleboga, burning out and burning up the hay, wood, and stubble. So that all that remains is silver and gold. I want to thank you, Lord, as that dross is burned away. I want to thank you, Lord, that more and more power is released to your church. I want to thank you. You declared in Exodus 34:10, signs, wonders, miracles, marvels such as never been seen among any nation would be done by us. You declared in Acts 5 that they would all be healed. All be healed. They would all be healed. And that we would go and teach others how it's done. So we thank you for it, Lord. Aliyah, we declare this is the now season. You declared that 2019 is our year of abundant harvest, and we declare it's harvest time. Again, the harvest time of souls, harvest time of miracles, harvest time of money, harvest time of equipment, harvest time of lands, harvest time of vehicles, harvest time of anointings, harvest time. I go go get a bush and get a candle. Okay, I'm a. I want to thank you, Lord, that every vessel of gold and silver that's been stolen out of this house must be brought back and put back in its place. I want to thank you, Lord. You promised us that you would be with us until all the work was finished. I can not go that more jondo for every part of the house. I la gala gonga la banja. Every willing and skillful servant for every manner of service holy at your command. Every expense given to the elders day by day without fail that the work of the Lord be not hindered. Oh, gala mo gala ma na selebo do la mo gala ma de la leva. La ma na no ko gala bo do la mo gala ma dan da la ba na selebo. And Father, you said everything that we've ever given up, everything that we've ever turned and walked away from, we got a sevenfold in this time. Ali andulo gonga da ba shela kiando. I can go and get we left houses and lands. Oh, get lay, but I did not get a book and I'm not a day but go down. Oh, houses and lands are coming. Oh, I've got mothers and fathers are coming. Sons and daughters are coming. Oh, I've got a boat and get a back. I'm a dosa lava dola bunch and ever did a beada. You didn't walk away from anything. I like you and that he hadn't already a super abundantly supplied. Oh, 
Oh, and thank you, Lord, the best is yet to come. Thank you, Lord, the best is yet to come. Thank you, Lord, the best is yet to come. Oh, thank you, Lord, the best is yet to come. Signs and wonders and miracles that we've never seen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Higher places, Akilaku. Higher places that we've never been. Revelations that we've never seen. That we've never walked in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they won't be a happenstance thing. It'll happen all the time. It'll be as natural as breathing air. We'll walk in the kingdom. As liberal distributors of heaven on earth. Liberal distributors of your glory. Liberal distributors of your word. Oh, we thank you for it, Lord. I want to thank you, Father. Oh, God, I might not just for 377 Direct Connection Drive, but I thank you for the entire street. I want to thank you. Akilebo, as it's been renamed, <laughs> River City. River City. Everything's in the city. Ha, <laughs> Everything you need is in River City. Because the anointing abides there. Oh, the supply. Ah. Your anointing is the supply, Lord. You said you would supply all our need. All our need according to and based upon your riches in the glory. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for Zion's temple. I thank you, Father, for the group that you keep increasing over there to get them born again. <laughs> I want to thank you, Lord, for your divine intervention at Zion's temple. They think it's a Hindu temple. <laughs> oh, you had such a plan, Lord. But I thank you, Lord, that you walk those halls. Your anointing fills that place. Your glory, your glory so fills the house that they can't even stand to minister. I want to thank you, Lord, that they fall out under the power, come up born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues. I want to thank you, Lord, that every person you said, you said, Lord, it's your word. You said wherever we place our foot, we can claim it. Huh? We've been a lot of places, Lord. We've been all around this world. We've been all over this city, all over this region. And Lord, we just claim it for the Lord Jesus Christ. You declared that Jesus would be a household word in this, na in this region. That Jesus would be on every person's lips. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord over this region. Jesus is Lord. Now, Akiambo Bola Pakalama. Akedebo Dula Makamadamadas. Now, Father, I pray for that, uh, uh, that officer that was shot last night. I pray over all of our officers in this region. I say, Satan, don't you dare. Don't you dare. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every officer, over each and every first responder, every, every fireman, every EMT, every jailer, every officer. I don't care if they're in the administrative office. Hands off. Hands off. And I claim a sevenfold return for that officer that was shot. Father, we pray for the person, the perpetrator. Oh, we thank you for his divine encounter with the Most High God. Oh, Father, we just want to thank you that this region is covered in your glory. 
I, like I, I 75, I 24, just saturated in your glory. And every car that goes up and down this highway is touched and changed by the power of the Holy Ghost. I thank you that you called us a city set on a hill and that men would be drawn to our light. And Father, I thank you that this house is filled with hungry and thirsty people for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank you, Lord, for your Gideon's army. Your Gideon's army that is well able to go and take the land. Oh, we're going to take the land, Lord. We take it. We take it by faith. We have it right now, and we thank you for it. Oh, Galamadakiyamoboshe. We got all a direct connection drive. Oh, I thank you for our big screens on the highway. Thank you for our credit union. Thank you for our, our tent. Miracles from Maine to Miami. All that place, yeah, I heard about them. Miracles from Maine to Miami. Father, we pray for all those who are spiritually over us. We pray for the Copelands. They will live long and they will finish strong. And no weapon formed against them shall prosper. None. And every tongue that rises against them in judgment, we condemn them. Huh? We condemn those words, and I thank you, Father, for showing every word to be wrong. We pray for the Seville's, the Dollars, the Winston's, the Moors, the Renners. Thank you for what they're doing in Russia, Lord. I thank you that the word is going forth in Russia. I pray for Mary and Zirkel in Guatemala. I pray for the Philippines. I pray for Terry Minor, Lord, in his move. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. It's up from here. It's up from here. Allah, up and out. Up and out. Alikilokoka. Up and out. Olokonga. Thank you for spreading his influence. Oh, Oh, we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for it, Father. Now we pray for all of those who need healing, whether it be mental, physical, social, financial. Oh, we just apply that burden-removing, yoke-destroying power. Spencer waits. I speak to that lymphoma. One more time. I say, ha, ha, ha. What you meant for his harm, our God is turning for his good. We thank you for the miracle working power that's released in his body. And Father, I thank you for the report of the Lord on Wednesday. Thank you for healing Kareen and Jerry. Thank you for healing Zach. Thank you for touching Jenny, Akiango, Gongelamasha, and Maria. Thank you for filling their house with peace. Now, if you need healing in your body, the salvation of a loved one, peace, obstacles removed, receive that burden removing, yoke destroying power right now. Right now. Say, I take it. It's mine now. It's mine now. I'm healed. I'm, healed. I'm whole. I'm whole. Body. Body, soul, soul spirit, spirit, family, family finances, finances, everything, everything every, part every part of me, whole, whole sound, sound, 
Nothing, Nothing missing. Nothing broken. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, we lift our hands and just give you the glory, Lord. We give you the glory. You're such a good, good father. We want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We just glorify you. We lift a hallelujah right in the presence of our enemies. We lift our hallelujah. We just sing louder and louder and louder than any unbelief. Because we thank you, Lord, that our melody aliando is a fight. I thank you that you come and fight for us. We don't have to fight it. Huh? No, no. The fight is right. Oh, the victory is in our faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. I want to thank you that you've supplied all things. All things. You've supplied all things. Everything we need. Already done. It is finished. It is done. It is finished. It is done. Woo! Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Such a... Thank you, Lord. We just lift our hands and lift our voices in praise. Praise stills the avenger and silences the enemy. So we thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for silencing the enemy in our nation, in our families, in our finances, in our bodies. Woo! Glory. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Hey, back here, my bosh and yama. Ali limina sola pakala basha shella. Woo! Haki yama. You know what? If people in the bar knew how happy you could get coming to prayer, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to fill the house. Woo! Come on. You can get so happy and so high in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, there ain't no high like the most high. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! I'm just telling you. Come on, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, Woo-wee. Yeah, <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> I know. I said we're being I said he takes the Things of this world to confound the wise. Amen. It's called freedom. It's called freedom. 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 Yep, I won't sing. Free spirit. Free I am free, baby. I am free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I am so free. And I am so thankful to be free. I know what it's, I, I, I don't know about you all. Can you remember what it was like not to be free? I tell you, I said the last couple, I, you know me, y'all know me, I'm not a crier. But the last couple of weeks in jail, I have just, I've been a crier. Vicki, you're wearing off on me, girl. I tell you, you get in there and you start giving your testimony. I gave my testimony the other day out of the clear blue sky. I mean, no reason for it, and, uh, except for God. And uh, we had, what, 14, 14 girls born again Hallelujah. out of 42. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. And then in uh, JK, we had uh, one, one, of, uh, one born again there out of 12 or 14, something like that. 17 last week. Not bad, not bad. Take that, devil. woo Glory. Well, y'all ready to learn some more about the laws of prosperity? Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, you know what I'm learning? Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Faith is truly, you know, I thought, isn't it interesting 
on Wednesday nights, we've been talking about how to operate in the kingdom or learning how to operate in the kingdom. Well, really, that's what we're talking about here is learning how to operate the kingdom. You know, I, I, I uh, pulled out a note the other day that where we had been teaching on Revelation on the word ecclesia. We are the called out ones. We've been called out of the general population. Be ye separate. Be ye separate. In order to be an ambassador, what does an ambassador do? It, re- it what? It represents what? It represents the country. It represents the kingdom. You are God's representative of his kingdom. That's who you are. I am a representative. I'm here to rule and reign over this earth. We're here to take it back. (coughs) Satan conned it out of Adam and Eve. Jesus restored it to us. Now we have to learn how to operate in what in even better promises than what Adam and Eve had. You need to understand the word R E. R E. It means unity. Unity. Repent. Right. Restore. Brief, re, uh, what was the, the word that he used the other day? Reform. Instead of re, reform. reform. Yeah. Be reformed, which goes to Romans 12, 1 and 2. You can put that up there. How, about, ro- how about renew? Renew. Mm, I got to renew my mind, which is Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do the first thing. Lay your body a living sacrifice. Oh, no, present. Present your body a living sacrifice, which is what you do when you first get born again. You say, Lord, here I am. Take me. Take all of me. You take all of me, and then what does he do? He gives you all of him. (laughs) Not a bad exchange. And what part you hold back, he can't feel. Oh, come on. What part you hold back, he can't feel. So why would we want to hold anything that we've got back? I want him. So he says, the very first step to prosperity is presenting your body a living sacrifice, emptying yourself of him so that he can fill himself up with you, right? So then he says, uh, which is just your reasonable, acceptable, and he says, don't be formed by the con of this world, conformed. That word CO, company. Yeah. Don't, don't. The company form. Woo. And, and that's not the company form you want to be company with. That's the company we've been set free from. And, but he still is trying to get you back. He doesn't understand that death has been defeated. He doesn't understand that you have been set free. He wants you back in his family, in his company. And you know what we say to that? Hell no. So that means he talked about that right there. You need to renew. Renew. So we need to renew. We have to continually know that God gave us a new mind. He gave us the mind of Christ so we can think like him. And you can't do it with the bold and the beautiful. You can't do it with the bold and the beautiful? Explain you, that. You can't do it with, uh, with the rest and restless. All right. The, the rest and, oh, gotcha. Okay, I didn't know what you were talking about. You can tell I'm a big TVer, right? You I cannot do it with love novels. Uh-huh, no. You, the only place you're going to do it is with the Word of God. You have to transform, form, be formed over and above by the renewing of your mind so that you will know and be able to prove what is the acceptable and perfect will of God. Well, where's his will? Huh? It's in his word. The only place you're going to find his will is in his word. So we found that last week we talked about that unless you have 
soulish prosperity. First of all, you have to have spiritual prosperity. The second one you need is soulish prosperity, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. You must be born again first. You have to be born again first. Otherwise, you, you're not a liberal distributor of heaven. Or your soul, earth. your soul remains stupid soul. Yeah. Well, you still are changed to the stupid one. Yeah. You're dead. You're right. You're dead and you have nothing to hook up with. Absolutely. Yeah, except death. Who wants death? I want life in abundance to the full till it overflows. Amen? The Lord told me, he said, you only died once. I did. Yep, yep. So we have to do, we have to get our mind right, which the only way that we're going to get our mind right is by learning how to think like Jesus. You know, we talked about, was mentioned this morning that in the, in one of the scriptures, he gives somebody a scroll. It's a scroll of his word, and he says, eat it. Yeah. You and I need to be eating this word day and night, day and night, day devour. and night, day and night. We need to devour it because the word is the power of God unto salvation. It's the word. It's, it, the word is what produces faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. That world it doesn't say renew your brain. It says no, renew your mind. mind. The mind of Christ. You have to learn to think like God. And last week we talked the about... The will, the emotions, and the affirmations. Yes. Oh, gosh, yes. Because, see, first of all, if you go back to how you're thinking, remember we said, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if I'm thinking wrong, if I'm thinking I'm a loser, if I'm thinking that, I'm, that I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, then guess what? You can't. If you think you're a loser, guess what? You're a loser. You're on your way to lose. But if now, you say... In this first thing, I put think increase. Think increase in every area. Stop. It fell right back to me. Think increase. increase. Thank you. Cast down what? Imaginations. Lack. Yeah. You're not made. You're not made to lack. No, in any area. Jesus Christ died on Calvary's cross to what? Make sure you don't lack. Right. That's right. He made you whole, body, soul, and spirit. You've been redeemed. You've been bought back. Amen. And somebody accused me the other day and said, you're a prosperity man. Yes, I yes, am. Yes, I am. I'm a prosperity woman, and you're a prosperity man. That's and right. then they started firing on Ken. I said, he's transformed the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. He transformed. Transformed. I can't wait. Don't miss Wednesday. I'm bringing Bill Winston. Bill Winston's going to be here Wednesday night, and I'm telling you, you need to hear what he had to say this last Wednesday. How many of you would like to have Bill Winston come? Mm-hmm. He's been a good friend of mine for years. Oh, yeah. All right, so where were we? We were talking about being transformed, huh? Being transformed. So we said, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. He's, we, we said that the ways of a man lead to death and destruction, but God's ways always lead to life. The word trans, T-R-A-N-S, means over and above. Over and above. All right. Over and above the form. Right. All right let's look at Matthew 6.33. Because remember that the world system is an exact opposite of God's. Exact opposite. And Matthew 6.33 tells you exactly how to be victorious. In fact, that whole chapter, if you go, it, it talks about how you're thinking. Don't take any thought about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or how you're going to do this or how you're going to do that. God knows. God knows. And if he took care of the of the lilies of the valley and he took care of the birds and the bees. They don't have to go to him and say, hey, daddy, can I have, can I have? He supplies. And what is can Philippians? I say one thing right there? He's already given it to you. Yes. He's, it is already done. There ain't done. nothing you're getting right now that's hurting him. Mm -hmm. 
But you have to remember, you have somebody who doesn't want you to operate in this. Listen, it's like Brother Copeland said, when you catch on to prosperity, when you, when you find out that you're an ambassador, that you have rights, the right to rule and reign on this earth, when you find out you have a right to be healed, you have a right to be rich, you have a right to have revelation, you have a right to the power of God, you are a danger. When you finally find out that poor ain't you. That's it. Then you become a great, a grave danger to the kingdom of darkness. Now, are there any poor people? Yes. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. But that ain't you. No. You know, there's some really rich people who are poorer than you. That's the truth. <laughs> you may not have their, their bank account, but you've got peace. If they had cancer, they could try all of the hospitals and all of, but what if it's terminal? And they say, sorry, we don't have any other answers for you. We've tried it all. But you and I have got the healer. We've got the power of God to deliver us out of any and all. Brother the couple said that the, the world is going to collapse. Where? In their money. Mm-hmm. Transfer of wealth. They're doing it right in front of you right now. They don't know what to do, which is Bible, by the way. Bible, by the way. So he says, but you, you, you that are of the kingdom, you that are ambassadors, you seek the kingdom. And they said, okay, now you, the world's going to collapse, their economic system, but the church is going to what? Blossom. Yes, right. That's right. So we have people to. gonna give to you that never gave before. Mm -hmm. That's right. Give and it shall be given. given. It's amazing when you're broke, how your ears finally hear that. Yeah. But he said, seek first the kingdom of God, the realm of God's authority that is in you. Remember, the kingdom of heaven is in you. Jesus is in you. The anointing is in you, on you. And seek his righteousness, which is his way of doing and being. Remember, our ways stink. We have to seek his ways. So, Lord, show us. Show us. Show when, you us. Are, when you are being something, you have become something. Mm hmm so he said, seek his righteousness, and then, and then, all the things that the Gentiles, the people who don't know God, don't have a covenant with God, will be added to you. You won't have to go out and seek for them. You won't have to toil over them. You won't have to sweat. You just raise your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank and you, realize, Lord. the root of all evil is the love of money. The love of money. Motivation. Motivation. Yep. 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 I have a couple of notes here. I said um, the world system of meeting needs is exactly the opposite of God's. God's system is adequate. It's just like if you got sick and the doctors can't help you, then what? <laughs> So we better learn how to operate in God's system because God's healing never fails. The, the uh, doctor told you I was gone. He did. He told me that if you somehow made it, you would be a vegetable with life in a nursing home. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, that's right. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and then I have a caution here. It says don't limit God by what the world says. Don't limit God by what the world says. You must think in line with the word. Amen. Yeah, if the world, if the world says you can't have it, go after the hook, line, and sinker. sinker. Because remember, 2019 is our year of Kavu. Sealing and visibility unlimited. But if you can't see it, you can't have it. If you can't see it, you can't have it. You have to see yourself healed. You have to see yourself prosperous. You have to see yourself coming up. You have to see yourself with the mind of Christ. You have to see yourself operating in the miracles of God. You have to see it. That's when God said you're blind. 
right. and you can't see afar off. Now, what can you see right now? I see thousands. And you're not. No, no, no. I'm hearing God's voice. It's called 67,000 people. 57 I churches. Thought, Lord, 67,000 people. How am I going to do that? You can't get there if you start right now. <laughs> But, but I can. can. That's right. The world says seeing is believing. But the word says you have to believe what you don't see. Faith, isn't that what faith is? Hebrews 11. Faith is the substance of things intensely and earnestly expected. The evidence of things not yet seen. Not yet seen. So... See, do you see the exact opposites? All spiritual laws, if you're going to operate in the kingdom, you have to operate by spiritual law. And all spiritual laws operated by faith. So it all works the same way. True prosperity is the ability to operate in God's power to meet the needs of others in any area. Can I say one thing? Yes, sir. Get your mind off yourself. Amen. You... It's like I, I preach to the, the prisons and jails all the time. You are killing you. And God's come to give you what? Life. Now, I want to take you to uh, Genesis. Go to Genesis 13. I want to start in verse 1. So Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and lot with him into the south country of Judah, the Negev. Now Abraham was what? He was what? I mean, he wasn't just a little rich. He had a couple of coins. Very no, no, rich. No. And he was very rich in livestock. He was very rich in silver. And he was very rich in gold. Now... How did Abraham, or Abram at that point, how did he get there? Look at Genesis 12, 1 through 4. Now the Lord said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from your kindred, from your family, from your broke folk, and from the kindred, and from your father's house, into a land that I'm going to show you, or unto a land that I will show you. And I'll make of you a great nation. And I will bless you, and I'll make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, and curse him that curse you, and in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That's me. So Abraham, or Abram, departed as the Lord had spoken. Abraham did what the Lord said. Who did the speaking? God spoke. It was God's word. What he did was he took God at his word. And when God instructed him what to do, then he did it. Remember what Joshua 1 and 8 says. Meditate in the word. What, what word has God given you? You meditate in that word and you meditate in that word and you meditate in that word until God shows you actions to take. Hey, put up there first uh, John... Five and one. Meditate in the word. So whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loves him, that begat, loves him also now that is begotten. Two. Verse two. Five, two, yeah. By this we know that we love I him. would love all things that you would. No, that's five, four. First John five, four, I think it is. No, that's a good one though. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. It's 3 John, I bet. 5, 4. 3 John. 5, 4. 1. 1, 4. Yeah, 3 John, 1, 1, 2. Sorry, 3 John. You'll we be all right. We know it. Now, get serious right here. Next verse, please. Beloved, I wish above all things. Above how many? All. Now translate that word wish. Uh -huh. Pray. I pray above all. Say all. All. 
things that you what? Prosper. And be in health. Even as you're so prosperous. So in other words, if you're if you're broken your soul, your spirit is trying to help you out. That's it. That's right. So he had to go back and he had to he listened to the Lord. That was that was Abraham's or Abram's first. You see that word prosper and be in health? If you're not in health, you are what? Broke. You're sick. If you're not in health, you're sick. And God promised you in Jeremiah 30, 17, he wants you healthy. That's right. That's right. Now, if you look up the word health, put there Jeremiah 30, 17. Hold on, we'll be right back. Well, For I will restore health unto you. Why? What's the word restore mean? Re unify with the storehouse. Oh, come on. Reunify with the storehouse. That's pretty good, Kreider. In other words, if you're already broke and sick, you're out of unity with the storehouse. Mm, that's In other good. words, God don't have no sickness. Nope. And he's not broke. And he said, and I will heal you of your wounds. Come on. Because they called you, because they called you an outcast. Huh? I love that word. This is Zion who no man seeks after. But, except now, God. if you can't translate in Zion, what is Zion? It's God's house. God's nature. Who God is. That's why we're going to call it Zion's temple. Mm-hmm. Amen. Okay. I'm all right. messing you up. That's all right. So Abraham was very rich. Number one, why? What was the first thing he did? He what? He listened to God. He listened. To God. He this, listened. Uh, Genesis 12. Yeah, he listened and he obeyed. Yeah. Say, I listen. I and I obey what I hear. Number two, he honored God. Genesis 12, 7. He honored God. And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and he said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him. Now who's your altar? Where is your altar? Mm-hmm. The Lord. That's it. Amen. You know, you can build an altar by giving. You can, build, you can give to someone else as an altar. An altar is a place that you remember a solemn what place. happened. It's a solemn place where you remember what you did. A memorial. A memorial. Yes. So he did that. Number three. That's why it's so important to realize God appears at the altar. I love this one. He was generous and he avoided strife. Woo, come on. He was generous and he avoided strife. Chapter 13, verses 5 through 9. Huh? I said he was generous and avoided strife. Genesis 13, verses 5 through 9. Yep. But Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land wasn't able to nourish and support them so they could dwell together. Genesis 13? Yep. Genesis 13. Now we're in verse 6. Now the land was not able to nourish and support them so they could dwell together, for their possessions were too great for them to live together. And there was strife. What happens when there's strife? Every evil work. Between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite were dwelling then in the land, making fodder more difficult to obtain. So Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife. 
He says, I say beg you. Say that again. Say it one more time. Let there be no strife. <laughs> no, if you got strife, get rid of it. Amen. I beg of you between you and me or between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we're family, we're relatives. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself, I beg of you, from me. If you take the left hand, I'll go to the right. If you choose the right hand, I will go to the left. So he said, the picking is yours. You choose. All this land is ours. You choose. You, if you want to go this way, I'll go that way. If you want to go that way, I'll go this way. Just don't let there be any strife between us. So he was generous by giving him first dibs when really Lot wasn't even supposed to be with him, remember? So he gave him, he gave to him first. Hmm. He gave to him first. Where are you at? He thought of somebody else first. That whole five through nine. Yeah, that was all in there. Number four, he was compassionate towards others. Genesis 18. By the way, this is not in your book. This is from Charles Capps, but I just thought that this, this fits right here, and it's so good. 18. Verses 24 through 33. He says, suppose, all right, um, well, look, go up, back up to 23. Abraham came close to God and said, will you destroy the righteous, those upright and in right standing with God together with the wicked? Remember when he's going into Sodom and Gomorrah? Suppose there are 15 there are, suppose there are in the city 50 righteous. Will you destroy the place and not spare it for the sake of the 50 that are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as do the wicked. That, that ain't going to happen. The righteous fare better than the wicked. Amen? Amen. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth execute judgment or justice and do righteously? And the Lord said, If I find in the city of Sodom 50 righteous, upright, and in right standing with God, I will spare the whole place for their sake. And, ans and he, he answered, Behold now, I who am but dust and ashes have taken upon myself to speak to the Lord. If five of the 50 should be lacking, will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five? For he said, if I find 45, I will not destroy it. And Abraham spoke to him yet again. Now that's gutsy. You're talking to the Lord of glory. He said, suppose only 40 be found there. And he said, I won't do it for 40's sake. Then Abraham said to him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak again. Suppose only 30 be found there. And he answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And Abraham said, Behold, now I have taken upon myself to speak again to the Lord. Suppose only 20 be found there. The Lord replied, I will not destroy it for 20's sake. And he said, Oh, Lord, don't be angry with me. I'll speak only one more time, just one more time. Suppose there's only 10 righteous there. And the Lord said, I won't destroy it for 10. And the Lord went his way when he had finished speaking with Abraham and Abraham returned to his place. I would say he was compassionate towards others. And the Lord said, you're my type of guy. The Lord is just waiting on somebody to say, Lord, help me so I can help somebody else. Yeah. So say this with me, Lord. Lord. Thank you. I hear your voice. And the voice of another, I will not follow. I honor you. I put you first place in my life. I don't put myself, my family, nobody can take your place. I honor, respect, and revere you only. I, I, I choose to be generous. And I will 
Avoid strife at all costs. Thank you for helping me. Lord, I choose to put others above myself. I choose to be compassionate like you were. You were moved with compassion. Thank you for that. One more. That Genesis. word co-passion, company passion, company what? Company desire. Yeah. So what's the desire? I would desire above all things that you yeah. would prosper and be, be in, in health, even, even as, as your soul prospers. So that's what we want for, if that's what he wants for us, that should be what we want every for Every time others. you see the word desire, every time, translate and meditate. Meditate and translate. Translate and meditate. Translate. Desire. Co-passion. Co-desire. In other words, who are you co-desiring with? God himself. He do not want nobody broke. No. He don't want nobody sick. Nope. He don't want nobody looking for help. He don't want anybody going to hell. Mm -mm. See, now Leroy Thompson, you might not know Leroy, but I do. And Leroy came up with a overwhelming revelation. Money comes. And every, every person that hated that word, man, they came out to him hand or fist. Well, let me ask you a question. Does money come or does it go? Both. But if you're born again, do you want it for what? Yourself? Or do you want it for someone else? Yeah, I want it for kingdom purposes. I got if you if you don't have if you can't use it right now, I've got bunches of people I can help. Yeah. Bunches. That's it. Okay? Co passion. That's it. Two more scriptures, Genesis 14, 23. And you can add this as number five. Yes, Genesis 14, 23. And number five would be, don't ever forget, it's God that makes rich. Uh, let's start at verse 20. Because he had gone out, remember uh, the king of Salem, uh, I mean not the king of Salem, they had gone, uh, had been attacked and um, they went out and they got all kinds of stuff, okay? And verse 20, he met Melchizedek. He gave him a tithe. He says, And blessed, praise, and glorified be God the Most High, who has given our foes into our hand. And Abraham gave Melchizedek the tenth, or the tithe, of all he had taken. And the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons and keep the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand and sworn to the Lord, God the Most High, the possessor and maker of earth, that I would not take a thread or a shoelace or anything that is yours, lest you should say, I made Abraham or Abram rich. Don't ever let those words come out of your mouth that you made yourself rich. It's God that gives us the power to get wealth. Amen? And then one more scripture. 1 Kings 3. 1 Kings 3. This man named Solomon was the richest man ever. And he wrote his wisdom in the book of Proverbs. Because he realized he didn't get it himself, right? So in verse 5, 1 Kings 3, verse 5, he says, In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And what? Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> something supernatural going on. And God said... Hey, Solomon, what would you like for me to give you? What would your response be? <laughs> you know it. You know it. Come on, think about that. If God showed up in your dream at night and said, Hey, 
what would you like? Would you be like Solomon and say, you know what, you've put me over a group of people, a huge group of people, and I don't know how to do this, and I need your wisdom. I need you to show me how. You know, really and truly, that's what we need to be saying to him every day. God, I don't know how to do this. Look at uh, Philippians 4, 12, 4, 11. Okay, can I, all right. No, no, he all right. Talk. Okay, he talk. Philippians 4, 11. But I can interrupt him. You're right. And then you can interrupt me. All right, 4, 11, Philippians 4, 11. Not that I speak in respect of want. I'm in the wrong. Well, uh, I have what? Not Why that I'm applying. How to be, be what? abased is to be content, satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted in whatever, in whatever state I'm at. Verse 12. I know how to be abased. I know how to be abased, and I. Mm-mm. I know how to be in the state of not having enough. But how to get out of it. <laughs> Come on. Give and shall be given. Shaken together and... Yeah. Let me help you right there. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. We're in charge. Yeah. Uh, we're in charge. Amen. If you don't understand that men are supposed to be giving you a bosom. Amen. When you understand that and you don't you know how it's done and you've learned how to do it, you give. And when, and when you got need, you thank God for helping you. Amen. And you need to be listening to the voice of the Father. Because he might want to use you to do something for someone, right? They don't have to ask you. I know how to be without. Yeah. I know how to be with. I I love what he says, though. I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation. Now, if you ain't learned it yet, thank God for helping you. That's right. That's right. And, And really, isn't that what Solomon was asking? Show me how, show me the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare or going without and being in want. Show me. And then show. Word. Thank you. For Thank you. Me. Thank you for showing me. Thank you for, because we know that according to faith, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. His word is the power of God to deliver us. So there is a secret. Again, going back to Matthew 6, 6, that prayer closet, that place, that secret place where you go and you say, okay, God, that's, that's where Solomon was. He was in the secret place. That, that word secret means hidden. Hidden. Hidden now by faith. That's right. You must believe that God is perfect. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He is, and he's a rewarder. Without faith, it's impossible to please him and be satisfactory. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't never give in when you don't have it. Press to get it. See, that goes back to bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ because the devil would love to discourage you. Any of y'all ever been discouraged? And don't let anybody think, don't let, don't think for a minute that word impossible is not there. 
-hmm. It's impossible to please him. See, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But those that come to God must, must believe. believe. And, and that he is a rewarder, rewarder of Back those. The word rewarder, not a reward. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek him. Constantly mm -hmm. and consistently. Right. That's right. Even, now let me say this, Parkland. Even when you don't want to, you bring your body a living sacrifice. That's right. Holy and acceptable. And many times, Lord, even though I don't want to be here, I'm bringing my body. The apostles did this. They gave themselves prayer. Acts 3 and 6. Acts 3 and 6. Though. Acts 3 and 6. They gave themselves to prayer. They gave themselves to prayer. You need to use your mic, honey. Uh, okay. Uh, Acts, three Acts 3 and 6. Mm -hmm. But Peter said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have that Wait I now. give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get up and walk. Yeah, keep moving. 7. And he took hold of the man's right hand. Wait a minute. Let me get the right one. Okay. Acts uh, 6 and 3 might be. It don't make a difference. You'll get it anyway. Yep. Acts. This is critical. I, God's given it to me to give you. There you uh -huh. go. Made it. Acts uh, 3 and 16. 3 16. Acts 3 16. Here it is. You better get it. And his name, through and by faith in his name, has made this man whom you see and recognize well and strong. Yes, the faith, which is through and by him, has given this man this perfect soundness of body before all of you. Is that the one you wanted? No, I can't remember now which I don't know. I think it's six and three. Let me look. Man, I didn't know I was going to help y'all do this. What does it say? The apostles gave themselves to prayer. Well, that's Siri. Siri knows everything. <laughs> and through the uh, meditation of the word. Come on. Big. <laughs> Where in the Bible does it say the apostles gave themselves to prayer? I found this on the web. 242. 6 4. 6 what? It's either 242. It's critical. Or 6 4. I, the Lord will not let me alone. All right, try 242 or try 6 4. It's 6 4. But we will give ourselves to continually to prayer and to the ministry is. of the word. Six and, uh, four. Okay. We will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So now, where's the action? When you give yourself, that means if you're in control of you or somebody else is. Continually. Continually. Now, what's that do to you? Use your mic. Open communication with God. Yeah. It gives you an open, open communication with God. That's it. So you're to what? Give yourself. Ain't nobody going to make you give. Mm -mm. 
ain't gonna make ain't nobody gonna make you pray. You must give yourself prayer. You know when when I have to give myself prayer when I don't want to. As an intercessor, as an intercessor, you're giving yourself. Talk about compassion of Abraham. You're giving yourself there as an intercessor. Like tonight when we come, we're not praying for us. We're praying for others. And so when we do that, what we're doing is we are sowing those seeds. Sowing those seeds. You'll never have revival. Mike. In That's it. It'll never happen. You're right. All right, so we'll go back to uh, 1 Kings 3. Find out what Solomon got. He asked for wisdom, and this is what he got. Verse 13, 313. Uh, back up to 12. God says, Behold, I have done as you have asked. I have given to you a wise, discerning mind. Thank you, Lord. I'll take that. So that no one before you was your equal, nor shall any arise after to equal you. Glory to God. I'll take that. I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings equal to you all your days. Verse 14, he said, if you will go my way, if you will go my way, keep my statutes and my commandments or my words as your father David did, then I will lengthen your days. Glory to God. So he got, he got health, wealth, and wisdom, didn't he? He got it all, body, soul, and spirit prosperity. And all he did was submit himself to God. So, Father, here we are. Tonight, we submit ourselves to you, and we thank you. We need your wisdom because we know that your wisdom is the principal thing, not money. Yeah. Money is the way, way, way down on the thing. We thank you for health. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for direction. We thank you for correction. We thank you for all those things that lead to true and lasting prosperity. And, Lord, we just give you the praise and the honor for it. Now, we bring, just like Abraham did, we, he, we bring our seed. We bring our tithe. We bring our offering. And we honor you with it. We thank you, Lord, for opening the windows of heaven, pouring us out the blessing, yes. the empowerments to prosper. And, Lord, we thank you for rebuking the devourer for our sakes and Lord, like we prayed this morning, I thank you that every hindering spirit that has been sent by the devil to work on our and hold back our finances has been bound and forever ceased his operations and the abundance is headed our way. And we believe it, we receive it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. If you need an envelope, for cash or credit card giving tonight, Jerry can help you. And if you're giving by, uh, if you're on the internet and you'd like to give tonight, you can do so by Venmo, you can do so by PayPal, or you can do it the old-fashioned way and drop a check in the mail. And uh, we will consider it holy seed, planted in good ground, that will produce a mighty harvest for you also. Amen? Amen. So, Father, I declare over each and every one that they're the head and not the tail, that they are above only and never beneath. I want to thank you that you are teaching us how to prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. I want to thank you, Lord. We are just like Abraham. We hear and we obey. I want to thank you, Lord, that we avoid strife at all costs. I want to thank you, Lord, that we honor you and that we're generous and we're compassionate. Uh, and Lord, we know above all things, it's you that makes rich. Thank you, Father. We will never say our own hand did it. No, no. Uh-uh. Everything we have is a precious gift from you, and we give you praise and honor. So, Father, I station angels of the Lord to encamp round about each and every one to protect and keep them until we meet again Wednesday at 6.30 in Jesus' name.
Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you all for coming and participating. Yes. Huh? Not too bad. Yeah, I, we did an hour and a half. Forgive. We went about 30 minutes long. Sorry. You have an announcement? No. Oh. Yes, we have okay. Fort Town tomorrow night. Fort Town right. Apartments, 7 to 8. Yep, got jail Tuesday night. Got uh, Wednesday night here, Thursday jail. You know, whatever. Hallelujah. Busy week. Woo-woo. All right. I love y'all. You're released. Hello. Welcome to River of Life Church. My name is Tyler Green, and this is ROL Live. To those of you who are new to the river, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us. If you'd like to learn more about us, you can stick around after the service and talk with one of our elders. Or if you're watching online, just visit our website. That's where you can get the latest information, submit prayer requests, and give safely and securely. That's all at rolc.org. We're finding new ways to stay connected as a body of Christ. That's why we've started our card ministry. So we encourage you, pick up a family information form in the lobby, fill it out, and return it to the black basket. And if you need any more information, you can talk to Connie Williams. We're looking for volunteers to help pick up donations from Panera Bread and take to the Chattanooga Rescue Missions. If you'd like to be a part or need more information, you can talk to Carrie Lawrence or Teresa Perry. Join us every other Monday for our community Bible study that's held at the Fort Town Apartments office. It starts at 7 p.m. Don't forget to talk to Willie or Lynn Gaston about the effective gospel outreach ministries. They go out the third Sunday of every month and give clothes and blessing bags to people from all walks of life. And best of all, they pray with them. There's always a need for toiletry and clothing items. Here's Lynn Gaston to tell you more. Thank you for being a part of Effective Gospel Outreach Ministries. We've been having a great time, lots of fruitful outreaches, um, lots of people giving their hearts to Jesus, rededicating, lots of healings going on, just having a great time of fellowship. And I just want you to know that we appreciate all the seeds that you've been sowing, all the clothes that you've donated. It's really hot outside and we need shorts, t-shirts, tank tops, sneakers, anything summer oriented would be wonderful. At this time, we are not able to accept winter clothes because we just simply don't have the space for them at the moment. But we appreciate you so much and thank you again. There's also an opportunity to give monetarily at the silver bucket on the stage after service. Our men's ministry has a breakfast the last Saturday of every month at the Golden Corral on Gun Barrel Road starting at 8.30 a.m. If you need any more information, you can talk to Andre Jude. We invite you to join us to our eight-week Bible study on the laws of prosperity by Kenneth Copeland. That's Sundays right after prayer at 6 p.m. If you need any more information, visit our website. That's rolc.org. River of Life Lafayette will be celebrating their 11th anniversary on Sunday, July 14th with a special service and a picnic. We'll have more information coming soon, but in the meantime, visit their website at rollchurch.com. That's ROL Live. Don't forget, you can join us for services at any of our three locations. The Waters Church in Trenton, Georgia, River of Life Lafayette, Georgia, and right here at River of Life Church, Chattanooga. To find out more, visit our website. That's at rolc.org.